compare first lean HELOC to second lean HELOC velocity banking strategies, right? In terms of overall performance, they're they're pretty comparable, right? Yeah. I mean, one doesn't crush the other one. So from a number standpoint, it, you know, for instance, if someone is at a 50% LTV or they've paid off half of their first position mortgage and they have a second lean HELOC, the question I ask is what are the goals? What, what are your goals, right? If the goal is strictly to save money and pay off your house and you're okay with managing a second lean HELOC velocity banking strategy, then the first position, uh, the first lean HELOC doesn't offer that much value to that person, right? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I do think about the difference between the two. One main one is that, it, you know, if you, well, there, there are two really that kind of come to mind. One has to do with management. The other one has to do with leverage uh, and the amounts that you can leverage. So the reality is with a second lien HELOC, you are always limited to the initial amount of draw that you were provided at the beginning of your HELOC. So, you know, if you're given $100,000, if you pay down your first position mortgage by 300,000, you still can only access 100,000 with your, you know, a total of a max of $100,000 line from your second lien HELOC, because it doesn't increase as you pay down your mortgage's balance. That's one way that a first is different which is that if you, the more that you pay down your first lean HELOCs balance, the more you have access to, to leverage, which means you can leverage more safely if you choose to with, you know, leaving a cushion there. So, so that's one main difference. So, you know, if, if people really want to, to tap into more and more equity, I would make the argument that getting a first lean HELOC would be more advantageous just because as you pay down your balance, you open up your line of credit more and more and more and more. Um, so that, that's one, you know, argument. And then the other piece comes to man, comes down to management, day-to-day -day use, right? The reality is that when you get a second lien HELOC, you, you add another vehicle to the myriad of vehicles that you already have, right? Got Which it. means you have another vehicle to, to use and manage, right? As compared to the first, where the first, when people use it in this way to optimize how it works, it actually consolidates, you know, a number of financial vehicles that you have all into one sort of financial hub. So again, the, the numbers have to make sense and they have to work out. And if you're going to lose money, right, with the first thing HELOC, it doesn't always make sense. The funny thing is I talked with someone a couple of weeks ago, it surprised me, but the qualitative features of the HELOC were worth taking a hit on his bottom line just because he was able to simplify his life, right? So, um, okay. and so you bring that's up usually not how it goes. Right. That's not how it goes usually. Right. Because this is a financial tool yeah. and we're, we're talking about bottom, dot, bottom, bottom line. But yeah. Um, but to be honest, my my communication or tone for him when I talked with him was more of one of this doesn't make sense. Right. And and I wasn't trying to steer him away from it. I'm not in like the loan prevention department. Right. That's not that's not my job. At the same time, I do believe that there's a, you know, with this product, there's a, there's a higher ethical responsibility to help people see what I see, right? And if it doesn't make sense, we need to let them know, right?